So, um, how does how does like working through whenever you get a new catalog in front of you and you're like, okay, I have to do the orders for this month. What's your process like? It's literally guessing. It's literally guessing just based on is that character popular? Do I think my customers are going to respond to that? How many people do I have buying that kind of title already? And you literally are guessing. Sometimes you guess right. Sometimes you guess way off. Um, I can think of a few instances <laughs> of things that have come out in the last four years that we've had the shop where I thought, oh, this is going to be big. I've got boxes of that book <laughs> in the back storage room that I, I can't do anything with. We're all going to be buried with them. Um, it's a what's, what's a good sell-through rate for something like whenever you have, say you ordered you know, 10 copies of you know, book X. Um, okay. What are your, what is your goals? Do you want to sell nine of them on that Wednesday? Do you want to sell uh, 10 of them? Do you want to, you know, what? Well, if it is a big Marvel or DC book, mm -hmm. like if it's Batman, mm -hmm. um, uh, if I'm ordering, say, I'm just throw a number out, if I'm ordering 20 copies of the newest issue of Batman, uh, I want to sell, first off, there's about half of that is going to go directly to the pull customers. Mm -hmm. Um, the other half is going to go on the wall. Now, I'm just using 20 as just a, a number I'm of throwing course. out. That's not what I order. I mo order more than that of Batman. But uh, the other half is going to go out on the wall. As far as sell-through rate at that point, um, I would like to sell through eight to nine copies and only have one or two left over for the back issue section. On Wednesday? On that particular Wednesday? Or do you uh, for that the month? week. Okay. So that week. Not necessarily that Wednesday. Because literally any book that comes out, a uh, weekly book that comes out, you have that, at least for us, you have that one week. That's your window of opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, for half of the titles that come out each week, after that week, your window of opportunity is shut. Mm -hmm. It's gone. So if you don't sell it in that week, good luck. You're stuck with it. It's going into the 99 cent section. Now, for something like Batman, Spider-Man, uh, X-Men, you want to have one to two copies. At least for me, I want to have one to two copies into my back issue section. Um, and really, it's it's not because I know it's going to sell there. It's because I feel like I have to have it there. Mm -hmm. People, Someone's going to come in and say, oh, I missed this issue, or do you have some back issues of that? But really, as far as the back issue market goes, and I'm only speaking for us, our shop, mm -hmm. it's really small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You've got, for us at least, you've got the people that come in every week to buy the newest issues of whatever series they follow. And then after that, you have people that go directly to the trade paperbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, a good example of that was Paper Girls. Uh, when Paper Girls came out, we could not order enough of those first few issues. We were selling through them like crazy. Um, we were constantly reordering the number ones and number twos and number threes. We were, um, I was taking it, from my, my partner Jeffrey also owns Jeffrey's Comics and Gardena. We were taking all of their copies because we were selling so many and they weren't selling it. Because uh, that's just not their type of thing. That's their customer. They don't respond to that. Mm -hmm. Ours did, like crazy. And we had a lot of film studios, uh, other entertainment companies that were coming and buying all the copies, making sure they got everything, got two or three, whatever, I guess, to pass around the office. you know. And um, uh, once the first trade paperback came out, the monthly sales of Paper Girls, of the, the, the monthly issues, straight to the ground wow just like not even like a slow decline i mean like literally straight down but were you getting requests for the trade paperback then yeah and then now we're selling through the paperbacks <laughs> same thing with saga wow we sell the monthly ones mm -hmm. but when a new one comes out uh, or a new trade paperback comes out everything that else shoots up the monthlies go down that's so it's interesting because you mm -hmm. only have that window that week that you were talking about to yeah. really get the people interested. Yeah. Because people either want it uh, right away and they mm -hmm. want to be the first one so they can talk about it, or mm -hmm. they want to be that one that can get in the volume and they can go, okay, I can digest all of this right. at the same time. Right. And I, I, again, I can only speak from my experience in my store, mm -hmm. but what I'm seeing is that Wednesday Warrior type of crowd mm -hmm. that have to collect every issue of a series um, that come out mm -hmm. um, is pretty small. I mean, when I was a kid, that was everybody, mm -hmm. you know, that was into comics. It was like, I got to get this issue. I got to get that, that issue. I got to find out what happened back then. I don't have that one. <laughs> and now it's like, nah, people just say, I'll just pick up the trade paperback and read the whole thing at once. So um, it's, it's a very different uh, buyer and readership, from my experience, than it was back then in mm -hmm. the 80s, 70s, 80s, even 90s. So um, I have to be conscious of that. 
we have a lot of people, like I said, like paper girls. I have to be conscious of, oh, I better order a lot, you know. Uh, and then when I know that when that first trade paperback is going to come out, I know I better drop my monthly order yeah. significantly or I'm going to be stuck with a ton of copies. Mm-hmm. So. 